this content is so disposable. Like ad fatigue is when everyone that you can target has been seen it already and they're no longer responding to the ad. So you just need to keep refreshing the view and the voice of, of whatever the, the message is you're communicating. It's always important to remember that the video is not a strategy. It's just a tool. B2B advertising is just so boring <laughs> <laughs> and has the biggest opportunity for disruption and for creativity, I think. And, and really probably LinkedIn video is probably the, the next like frontier, I think. Welcome to Add to Cart, Australia's leading e-commerce podcast that express delivers all you need to know in the fast-moving world of online retail. Here's your host, Bushy. Welcome to another episode of Ad to Cart. I'm Bushy and I'm joining you from the land of the terrible people, otherwise known as Brisbane, Australia. On Ad to Cart, we welcome everyone to share and listen to e-commerce stories. The more diverse, the better. I want to especially welcome the traditional owners and the original storytellers of the land that we are on, our Indigenous and Torres Strait Islander listeners, to join us in our e-commerce conversations and our community. Hello and welcome to our very last episode for the year. Over the summer, we are going to have a couple of very special episodes where we recap the best chats that we think we've had, but also the most popular as told by the numbers. But this will be the very last regular chat and what a year it's been. We've had some amazing guests and today is no different. Are you someone who really struggles with bringing video to life. No matter how good the intention is, no matter how well it's scripted, you just cannot get in front of the camera and be the spokesperson for your brand or make video that you think will really resonate for your customers. Well, today we have a duo who are aiming to fill this problem, but also actually provide a pathway for content creators that may not necessarily want to be influencers. Dave Hack and George Brown are co-founders of Creator Flow. It's a platform that connects brands with UGC-style ad creators. The guys found a gap between those who have a need for social media ad content to be made and those with the talent, experience, and availability to make it. They've filled their books with high-quality Australian creators and are working with some pretty impressive clients such as Shark Ninja, Who Gives a Crap, and The Udi. Today, Dave and George get into the detail of exactly what UGC is and how it differs from influencer content. They share wisdom from both sides of the equation, from how to produce great content and the must-haves when briefing for UGC. We also get their predictions on where we're going to see the most future disruption in this space. Now, if you are keen to try Creator Flow, listen up at the end for a special sign up offer. So, thanks to our partners, Shopify Plus and Signet, here's our conversation with Dave Hack and George Brown, co founders of Creator Flow. Dave, George, welcome to Add to Cart. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, Nathan. Great to be here. Great to have you here. You're joining us from Perth, I believe. Yep, correct. Beautiful. All right, we are here to talk all about Creator Flow, what you guys have created. Let's get straight into it because I hadn't heard of Creator Flow until I was steered that way and was really impressed by some of the retailers that you had on board using it, but also the model itself. So I'm really keen to dive into it. So Let's kick off just giving our listeners a bit of an overview. What is Creative Flow? Sure. Yeah. So Creative Flow is basically a platform that allows brands, predominantly e-commerce brands, but also service-based businesses to get access to really talented Australian content creators that can make this new style of content called user-generated content. And so, yeah, we found a lot of problems with the industry and how to actually acquire this content. And so that's when we came up with this idea just to make it a whole lot easier for brands to get their hands on it. Was there a particular moment or a particular problem that you saw that went, Shh, we've just got to start this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, actually, um, the idea came about when I was running my business Wash Block, which was a sustainable personal care product-based business. And I needed a lot of this content, but I found it a real challenge to get it. There were agencies that promised they could deliver this, but it was way out of my price budget. And then just acquiring it myself was a massive headache. Yeah. communicating across all sorts of different channels, emails, text messages, instant DMs and everything. 
the quality was all over the place, and then also usage spikes is a real headache. Mm. So yeah, that was sort of the light bulb moment when I thought, hey, surely there's other brands that are having the same problem and we can make it a whole lot easier for them and also more affordable. And so obviously you've got the agency side there that you can go to where you'll have professional designers on hand. You'd also assume would have explored the option of going down the Upwork or the Fiverr track. Did you go down that path as well? Or when you had Washblock. Oh, when I did Washblock. Yeah, sure, yes. I looked into working with the agencies for sure, but I just couldn't afford them. So really steered away from that decided to sort of manage the whole process of vetting creators and working with them myself. But yeah, as I mentioned, it was quite time consuming. Yeah, it was fraught with lots of different issues. Yeah, fair. And then how did you guys get together? So we're part of like a a venture studio. I was kind of looking for like basically a co-founder to tackle a problem worth solving. That's kind of when I met and connected with George and thought, yep, he's the kind of guy I wouldn't mind getting stuck in an airport with. (laughs) (laughs) Internal test. Loved what he built with Washblock and thought he had, I guess, the, the talent and the, the vibe we needed to do something great. Fantastic. Yeah, it's been great so far. I'm stoked to be working with Dave and we seem to be getting some great momentum now. So it's exciting times. Well, let's talk about that momentum. Some of the retailers or the D2C brands that you've got on board so far include the Udi, Shark Ninja, Orbit Key, who gives a crap. There's some pretty big names in the D2C space in Australia, brands that a lot of retailers and founders will be looking up to. Which brand did you get on board that you went, oh, shit, I think we've got something? Yeah, it was obviously <laughs> those guys are the OGs of UGC. When they found us and kind of got underway and, and then booked a chat with us to suss out where we legit and meeting with the content team there, that was really in that conversation, yeah, we're definitely solving a problem they have. Like, you know, they're working with between 30 and 40 creators at any one time to keep Mm. up with the content that they need because I think everyone knows that this kind of content is disposable so you need to have a keep you know keep refreshing your creative for all of your ads and so when they describe the challenges of like all the different platforms the messages are coming in trying to vet creators are these guys actually going to be able to deliver the content we need are they going to stick to the brief and also the time that they were losing just trying to reach out to potential creators we're like, oh, yeah, I think we're onto something. And they've kind of been great coming back and keep placing orders. Uh, particularly, I think we've got a great cohort of male creators, which are kind of like the unicorns of UGC. Why are male creators so hard to find? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess um, it just seems to be in the industry that women are much more happy to jump on, film themselves talking about a product, and males just aren't so comfortable, really, it seems. Great opportunity for any male listeners Absolutely. out there who are keen to jump in front of a camera. Yeah, we've got a handful that are cleaning up on the platform currently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only good for voice. Um, <laughs> face for radio. Yeah, face for radio, exactly. So tell me about how the UD uses you. So you said that they had 30 to 40 people that they were going direct with. So now I'm imagining that Creative Flow is the middle person without giving it too much of a stigma attached to that. But you do the work of selecting, negotiating, pulling that content through for the UD for multiple creators. Is that right? I guess the, the way that we work is we're, we're just trying to be a platform that makes it really easy for brands to connect with great creators. So to get ads that work and then also for the creators to get work from ads. And they basically use us to like when they've got a new, they've got a brief or something they know kind of works or a script they're looking for, or maybe they're looking for a new idea or a new angle. They'll post it on our platform, choose some creators they want to work with and commission them to make the job. Then it is very similar to some of those kind of freelance platforms like Fiverr or Upwork, but I guess that in terms of the job management and just how that all works. And But I, I think what kind of makes us a little bit unique is it's how, how focused on UGC it is, but also we're able to provide quality creators in our market, which, you know, some of those kind of more global platforms you just kind of it's a bit too spread a bit too diverse not tailored to australia you've got to wade through a lot to get to the quality on those bigger platforms that's right Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. you mentioned the new style of ugc that you guys specialize in what is the typical format of content that you find yourself connecting with most often i guess what we mean by that is we're describing it as creator made ugc yeah. So as opposed to the previous version, which would be influencer-made UGC, mm-hmm. 
And then the very first type of UGC where the name comes from, like user-generated content, act, act true customers. When UGC first was dreamt of, it was really around the hope that real customers would make great content that we can use as a brand. And, you know, obviously that stuff's the best. It's the rawest, the most, you know, true. But most customers aren't creators. Mm-hmm. So to actually get content that is usable and reliable when you need it is too hard. So then brands are like, hey, let's try influencers. They're great at making content. But the problem with a lot of influencers is that they believe they're famous. So they want to charge rates and use like a, a legal framework, you know, usage rights to kind of earn more from the process. And most brands were finding it co- too costly. But also this content is so disposable. Like ad fatigue is when everyone that you can target has been seen it already and they're no longer responding to the ad. So you just need to keep refreshing the view and the voice of, whatever the, the message is you're communicating. And so that's that's kind of where the, the thought to make just creator-made content, which gives, you know, 100% control to the brand of the brief, of the creative, of the distribution, because they're putting that through their brand and ad accounts. And then it also gives like full usage rights. Our creators are effectively like freelance creatives, as opposed to trying to be, you know, famous influencers. They're not trying to look after their audience or anything like that. They're not conflicted in their brief. They're not worried about distribution. Yeah, yeah. We're not solving a distribution problem. And as everyone has seen on all the social media platforms, like distribution, particularly from those organic influencer accounts, is not what it was. Yeah. Everyone knows it's kind of pay to play. So best way to do it right now is have 100% control of a message, tweaking it to make sure those hooks are landing, the problem that you're sort of communicating, that you're solving, is resonating, solution is kind of there and there's a call to action that works. So, yeah, I, I guess the format we're seeing the most of is with that classic kind of ad narrative. Do you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Yes, definitely. Um, Dave's spot on the money. It's sort of the ads that start with a strong hook that sort of grabs the attention of the viewer and then goes into the problems and solution and, and features and benefits and then ends, with again, with a strong like a call to action asking them to go and do something like visit the website or swipe up or whatever it may be. So, yeah, that seems to be sort of the sweet spot and the most popular on our platform, and rightly so, because it does seem to work really well. While the big supermarket chains dragged their feet to get rid of plastic bags and packaging, online grocery startup Good Groceries is leading the way by eliminating 100% of plastic packaging from all their fulfillment processes. But it doesn't stop there. They are one of the few retailers to achieve climate active certification as a carbon neutral operation. Each order is sent in Signet's shipping cartons, craft paper and water activated tape. No dodgy long life plastic bags here. If you're serious about sustainability, visit signet.net.au to browse the range and contact the team to find out how their packaging solutions can help your e-commerce business. And are you mainly talking about ads in the format of short form video for TikTok, Instagram, et cetera? Correct. Yeah. So... Basically, what we provide is vertical video content. That's what the brands are ordering. And it's really sort of organic looking and authentic. And then these brands are going on to use it either organically just across their social media or they use it for like paid ads on Facebook or TikTok or the likes. Gotcha. Makes a lot of sense because I know a lot of brands struggle with that. They want to get onto TikTok. They want to, you know, expand their video content, but founders might not be comfortable in front of camera or they just may not have time to do it well. So that makes sense to connect in. And I love the differentiation you made between influencers and creators. I think that's really important to stress in how it's different. When you are working out or trying to bring together creators on your platform, do you have a set of criteria that you look for to allow them onto the platform? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we, um, we're pretty stringent with what <laughs> creators we allow on and what we like to see and what we don't. So we ask for all creators to upload at least two or three video examples of UGC videos that they've actually made for clients previously. And on top of that, an introduction video, you know, clients can really get to know the creator and everything. But with those UGC showcases, we review each one 
and we yeah. rank it against production quality criteria and then they're doing then the yeah also i'm just using the google abcd kind of video framework as well and then we're also looking for kind of ad narrative so all the creators on our platform have to demonstrate they understand ad narrative before they yep. get through to date we've had probably about 1500 creator applications started of which you've only let 220 creators through and it's because this is not just organic content this is just not like oh i went to a restaurant that was fun here's a hook that's really compelling here is a great message that wants me like wants me to buy this product the hardest thing about reviewing all the videos that do get uploaded is often i'm like then clicking on the ad like trying to find the company that it was about it's like this is an amazing product i want to buy this thing so <laughs> i've had to like catch myself a few times being like oh no 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 you've got 30 udis in your wardrobe oh, no 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 like i guess that's the level <laughs> of creators that we're looking for and hoping to kind of curate and just make really easy to access you mentioned the production quality criteria can you give us an idea of what's in that even if we've got people at home who are listening going oh no, I really want to improve my own videos, whether it's them shooting it themselves. What is that criteria that you think they should be looking at? Yeah, look, we, we definitely recommend just like looking up the Google ABCD framework, which is just a really helpful guide to some of the fundamentals of what makes a video wanting to watch. But on the production side, it's probably around things like audio. Can you actually clearly hear what's going on? Some creators will have this like background music way too loud. You can't even hear the message. Sometimes there'll be a massive audio jump difference from to camera to, compared to what they then do a voiceover section in. Also framing. One of the fundamental rules of framing is just about like rule of thirds. If your face is in the bottom of the screen, that's probably not going to look great. <laughs> but you wouldn't be amazed how much like content out there that's just doesn't look good. Lighting. So having a little bit of basic front lighting is is good or backlighting if you're trying to make something look cool. It's those kind of fundamentals of yeah, video production. Yeah. We all know that attention spans are shrinking rapidly, so just making sure that editing is really quick and snappy is, is also really important, so that's also what we're looking for. Yeah, I think that's what I struggle with the most. Even like putting out the clips from Add to Cart is knowing that I should be editing this so that you're changing frames and changing angles and putting music, and I'm like, I just can't do it. Like <laughs> It's just not in my DNA to do it takes a special kind of person, I think, to be able to do it. And then, Yeah, it's definitely, a, it's an art. Or a special AI platform, you know. <laughs> spot on, spot on. And obviously, the irony behind it that we spent the first 10 minutes of this video call trying to set up our own backgrounds and lighting and sound. <laughs> <laughs> to get yeah. Right as well. <laughs> yeah, it's best to leave it to the pros. That's right, exactly. And so tell me, what does the commercial model look like for brands who might be looking to engage Creative Flow to connect in with content creators? What does that look like? Yes, yeah, so you can pay as you go, which is a little bit unusual in, in our space. That was a huge feedback we got from the market, from all the brands we connected to, is that they didn't necessarily want to have to commit to a retainer mm. when they're not sure if this is going to work for them or or our, so we've made it really accessible in that you can just buy one video to test out, test us out, test out the creator. I guess the next step up from that is to kind of buy kind of bulk pre-purchase kind of an amount to get a discount on getting your videos through. And then we also increase that discount if you want to then turn that into a like a monthly subscription model in terms of the, the credits you can use on our site. Yeah, so it's, it's really easy to kick off. You just, most brand managers or Content managers have got access to some kind of credit card, so it's just kind of prepaid purchase. It makes it way easier for everyone. No one's chasing up invoices. And, and particularly on the side of for brands that are dealing with lots of creators, we're making sure the creator side's handled. So, you know, they have to have an ABN, they have to be have a legit business structure. And then, but for a brand, we just become a single invoicer, which makes everyone's accountants happy. Yeah. And, you know, Everyone knows how important it is to keep your accountants happy. So working with Creative Flow just makes it way easier for brands. And do the creators set their own price and you mark that up or how does it work? Yeah, so currently we've got basically fixed pricing across the board. But what we do allow creators to do is to set their minimum price that they will take. So that basically means when the brands are going through and creating their order, if the price falls below what the creators will take, they're basically just filtered out. So that's how we get around that. But across the board, it's just fixed pricing and it's up to the creators to either accept or decline the job. Pretty much nine times out of 10, the creators 
take the job. They're, they're really happy to have the work, which is great. And when you're filtering through searching for creators, what are some of the most common filters used? Because I could imagine that a lot of brands would be very particular around the types of people that they would want in front of camera, potentially, you know, in the right target market, passionate about the product. What tools do brands have to filter out and find the right talent? Yeah, the main tool is just like the age demographic because that's typically the main thing that brands are looking for or trying to connect with a certain age range. A huge one is also just the family side of things as well, like family-related products, kids' baby products, Mm -hmm. so they can filter around, Mm -hmm. you know, if they can show kids and and at what age categories. They can also kind of filter if, if you need a partner involved in a shot or you can kind of specify that in your brief. That's kind of the main ones. The good thing to understand and the freedom that it is created by using creator-made UGC is that they're more like paid actors than they are influencers or personalities. So as long as the creator personally feels some kind of resonance with what they're able to present and they can present it authentically, that's kind of all that matters. It's not about necessarily what their audience engages with or, or how that resonates. So it actually reduces the level of filtering that's required compared to traditional kind of influencer marketing. There's less kind of background checks and stuff that needs to happen. That's what we're finding out. Our clients are not as fussed because they know they're just getting a creative person to make a really engaging piece of content. It's not coming with essentially all of that other stuff attached. We do give them the option to do a deep dive if they really want to in that all our creators have all their social profiles on their profile on Creative Flow. But the idea is to speed it up, not slow it down. So. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And in terms of when your brands are briefing in their creators, how detailed are the briefs? Because like you said, with influencers, it's almost like, here's a product, go create what you want to create, tell your audience what you think. This seems more like advertising, having paid talent to represent your product. Are you finding that brands want to script something really in detail or are they letting them fly a bit loose? Yeah, it's a great, great question, Nathan. I think it really depends on the maturity of the brand as to what data they've got that they know is working. And I think that's the big opportunity for this type of low-cost creative, for this whole UGC space, is it gives you the ability to lean on really talented creators to come up with a voicing of a script that is going to resonate and that also comes across super organic. So when a brand is at the early stage of that journey, we're always encouraging them to give the creator as much kind of creative license to come up with their own script Mm -hmm. and experiment with that and then get a bunch of different versions of an idea or an angle made and then test that to work out what messages are resonating with the target audience that you're trying to reach. And then as you go down that process and as each round comes back, you have the kind of the ability to make really informed decisions about what particular lines or messages as you build an ad narrative script are working and you need to like hang on to and keep. And we see that with our like more advanced brands. So, you know, the, the Udis and or the Shark Ninjas or people that have kind of had a few runs on the board using this content, like the further they get into that process, the more detailed and specific they are to the creators. We think the biggest mistake that a lot of clients make is that in their very first go, they're just trying to jam all of these kind of advertising messages into something that's meant to get past people's ad filters. And that's the other opportunity of UGC is the whole point is to trick people (laughs) in some ways to be like, is this someone I know? And by the time they work out, nah, this is just a random, they've already been given a great message about the product that it's all been hooked in with some kind of story visually or, you know, in terms of the, the script that's going on. So, so yeah, we're always recommending to lean on the creativity of these you know, talented creators to, to communicate for you. There's lots of research out there around how well organic-looking video performs in paid social spots versus the slick studio-produced content. And I think there's plenty out there for people to see. Have you had any feedback from your clients around the performance of creator-led content versus even influencer versus studio or agency-led content? Sure, yeah. We've had um, one client put complete home filtration and they tried us out, uh, I think, about two months ago. And, yeah, they just came back to us after two weeks saying, this is incredible, guys. 
we've halved our customer acquisition cost. And so they were absolutely wrapped. That was one great result. Definitely. Yeah, we're seeing that pretty consistently that where people transitioning from like a, a more traditional style ad, that they're just getting way better engagement and then therefore they're getting a lower CAC. Yeah. And that's that's really the opportunity, particularly for stuff that's really top of funnel. If you're trying to introduce people to your brand and then maybe down the track, you know, through retargeting or even bottom of funnel, giving them a more traditional ad that, that then instills like trust in the brand, mm. then that's great. But in terms of the social proof, you just can't beat like that UGC organic style ad, particularly when it's allowed, when you're allowed to create a voice it. Is there any part of your model that's considering moving into helping brands distribute the content as well? Because I could imagine that sometimes you can have the best content, but if you have a really shit paid strategy behind it or you're targeting the wrong audience or not trialing the right channels, all of that great content can go to waste. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a great question. We're, we're finding more and more when we're talking to our customers that have used us, this, we're saying, how, how do you like the content? They're going, we loved it. It's so great. And how did it perform on, on paid ads and everything? And they go, oh, well, we actually haven't launched this ad. You know, <laughs> this content is ads yet. And so we're kind of scratching our heads, Dave and I are going, I wonder how we can help them actually implement that and, and put them on ads. So, yeah, we don't have any solutions yet, but, no, yeah, still we're exploring. <laughs> do you partner with agencies? So, say, Definitely. paid performance agencies? Yeah. Because you both got gaps there, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, and, and look, a huge majority of our agency clients are performance agencies because we're solving a massive issue for them. They have great clients. They're doing a great job of running the ads, but they need really high quality and fresh content to keep doing a great job of the ads. We're working with a lot of great performance agencies. So we, if our clients are struggling, we're generally referring to those kind of agencies that we've seen just do, yeah, great stuff. We would trust to, to do that. Uh, I think in terms of the distribution question, we have been really surprised how little the clients have brought up the distribution issue in that we've only had a handful of requests for creators to also whitelist or run Spark ads, so that's on TikTok where, or Instagram where you can basically get the creator to, to post it through their account and then it can connect back to your ad account and then you can boost that post or you know, spend increases the reach of that post as an ad. And we've only had a handful of requests for it. So, I mean, it's definitely something we'll, if those requests go up, we, we would work out how to incorporate. But yeah, we're actually surprised that there hasn't been that much market demand for it around that distribution side. I mean, you are dealing with some of the most progressive D2C retailers in Australia there. So it'll be interesting to see as it gets bigger and broader sure. how that pans out, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I also think the hardest part in this equation is definitely getting the creative content. Mm. And then the media buying, I mean, Facebook and Google and Instagram and TikTok, they make it so easy now and their algorithms are so incredible that you don't need to be an expert anymore. You basically just need to leave it up to them. And it's all basically reliant on the quality of the content that you're pushing out there. Yeah. So with your content creator community, you've created a great community there. You said you've got, what, over 200 creators on the platform? Yeah. Do you have a favorite? <laughs> We've got a few favorites. The favorites tend to be the ones that deliver on time and exceed the, the customer's expectations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tell us about someone that comes to mind. They may not be your favorite, but tell us about someone that comes to mind. Give us a bit of a description of a content creator out there that you think is doing some standout work? Yeah, sure. So there's one creator that comes to mind called Mitch Harris. He's from WA, but he's just moved over to the Gold Coast. Super talented guy. And he's had a handful of different jobs over the years, but recently he's just found his real niche in this style of content and delivering quality and value for brands. And yeah, this is a good little earner for him. He takes it a bit more seriously than um, some of our newer creators, which is great. And that's what we're really finding. The creators that are wanting to push into this and make it their full-time thing are just delivering some exceptional content for brands. Is he full-time now or getting close to full-time? Yeah. He's pretty much full-time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's another creator called Tilia Jasmine. She's similar. They just produce awesome Yeah, content. what I love about Tilia's story is she basically decided that this is the kind of stuff that she wanted to do just eight months ago. Yeah. And from eight months to ago to now, she's now full-time just creating content Amazing. and yeah she's doing a great job just yeah she's one of the kind of yeah stars on our platform for sure it's the calm before the storm 
And unlike George Clooney in The Perfect Storm, spoiler alert, Shopify wants retailers to come out not just alive, but thriving, because it's a big deal, especially here in Australia. Last year, Australian merchants ranked third globally in Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales volume. What an opportunity. So if you want to maximize your share of the peak sales this year, use this time before the storm to download and read Shopify's peak season playbook. They've got 10 experts, including me, to share their tips on how to maximize sales at this time. So put on your life jacket and get your hands on Shopify's free peak season playbook. Download it at shopify.com forward slash plus forward slash guides forward slash peak sales season 2023 or just follow the links in the episode show notes from the device you are on. Land ahoy. On the reversal of that, have you had situations where content creators have delivered content, might have been on brief, but clients have turned around and said, no, nah, this isn't what we wanted. I've worked in advertising before. Some clients don't know what they want until they see it. Have you had that scenario? How do you deal with it? Yeah, 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 yeah we definitely have that scenario. <laughs> Look, anything creative, you're always going to have those kind of situations where someone, um, I think the challenge is where people are new to UGC and they're still expecting a traditional ad. Mm -hmm. and they don't quite understand, well, why didn't you say the five things I needed them to say in 20 seconds? Because no one would watch that video. (laughs) That's why. Yeah. And so that client education piece is is a challenge that that, that we have and trying to mediate that and take them on the journey is a challenge. That's why we really love working with creative agencies that just want to use us to increase their capabilities to do content because they're better suited at, at working with clients on that side of things. But typically, we just try and do our best to, to come up with a great resolution for everyone. So there's, usually it, it just comes down to miscommunication or, or misunderstanding. And we feel like we've had a pretty good track record of working that out. You know, for example, a, a client might ask for a reshoot, but really what they mean is a re-edit. And so the creator sees reshoot. It's like, no, nah, well, I've, I've already done this video of whatever the set was, I can't redo it. And really what that client was actually asking for was I just need you to change this visual to this visual or edit something out. So we typically can just jump in there and, and kind of mediate a great result. Where it really goes belly up and it does happen, our policy is like a you know 100% kind of money back guarantee. So uh, we'll either find another creator for the client to then fulfill the video to whatever there is they're looking for. Or, yeah, just refund them. So that's kind of how it works. And fortunately, we haven't had to do that too many times so far. No, makes sense. And I could imagine your point there around agencies. For agencies who might be banging their head against the wall with some clients who are like, if only we had the opportunity to put the content in there that we want, could even be a great proof of concept for some agencies at a low cost, low investment cost to be able to trial some new content on behalf of a client, right? obviously with their permission. Absolutely. And we're even seeing agencies use us to generate content to form a pitch Mm. to a new client because it's relatively cost effective. They'll actually like rather than waiting for the client's permission, they just get some videos made that actually go into a pitch and we're seeing them like win some great jobs with that. So yep. like really proactive agencies can yeah, use us to, you know, because our creators deliver content within 72 hours of getting everything they need to make a video. So yeah, it's a, we definitely recommend that. So tips for anyone who is out there creating short form video UGC. So whether using Creator Flow or not to brief in, what would you say are the must haves to include on a brief mm. when you're briefing out? to your creators even before you start the brief our our key tips would just be have a really good strategy it's always important to remember that the video is not a strategy it's just a tool so have a great strategy who are you trying to reach what stage on their journey are they like whereabouts in in your funnel or however you describe it is this piece of content going to be then also have a great understanding of once you actually have this content what you're going to do with it before you make it (laughs) Yep. So having a, a loop to some kind of performance data is really essential to having success with UGC. And then I guess when it does come to having your brief, we always would recommend just having one clear message that you're trying to communicate 
per video. What's the one thing you want to highlight? And then if you can go in with that, if you had some ideas around different angles or different hooks and stuff to try, we'd recommend that. And then the last thing would be that uh, when you do brief a creator, you ask them to do a few extra hooks for you. So alternate intros and different variations you can try. Just last week, we were making our own founder UGC just to try out some ads for ourselves. And I found I had one video where I just went straight into what we were offering, which was like a free UGC script generator that we've developed. And if I introduced myself and said, hi, I'm Dave from Creator Flow, I'd get a 1% better click-through rate by just introducing myself oh. as opposed to going straight into my script. So like experimentation of that intro, of that first three to five seconds, which is called the hook, is just so, so critical. I'm surprised you didn't try and find some lookalikes on the platform to do it for you. <laughs> We have, we have. We, we've tried. Um, Wait, they we'll, great closely, too. we'll closely monitor the results on Facebook ads and uh, if we don't come up to scratch, we might uh, palm it off. <laughs> <laughs> and what about video length when it comes to ad content across Instagram, TikTok? Any recommendations there? It really depends. It doesn't seem that Facebook penalizes depending on length. It's just really about how engaging the content is. We're finding that 30 seconds is enough to get a few key messages across and yeah, educate the viewer. And I'd probably advise like any longer than that, unless it's really engaging. Yeah, it's probably too much. And obviously platforms like TikTok are created to keep you in the vortex of TikTok, not to allow you to click out. What kind of calls to action are you seeing really resonate in that platform, especially? Yeah, look, TikTok's a challenging one for call to action, as I'm sure most of your listeners would, would know or had experience with. Like a, a strong CTA is just not, they're just not letting you get through. Remember that um, blink in Lyo trend from you know a few years back because they wouldn't let you do link in bio so that there's still a struggle but there is some creative ways around it and we think it's just more about coming up with an authentic storytelling approach to a call to action mm -hmm. so for example it might be it's the way that you would personally recommend someone to do something as opposed to how a brand is telling you to do something so if you can like frame it as in get yeah, something more like a personal friend recommendation that's a great way to kind of get around that. But also you have to understand that you're probably using TikTok at this stage as more top of funnel part of your strat or step in your strategy. First comment video is seems to be the most effective right now if you needed a stronger call to action. But the TikTok platform is constantly evolving and changing. And, um, you know, there is a little bit of rumours that TikTok shop is coming to Australia next year. So I think that's going to see a whole lot of change. So yeah. in the short term, yeah, just keep experimenting and see what you get through. Yeah, it's interesting. They've cut off access to some of the feeds for other types of shops. And I think you're right, is that they'll consolidate it and bring all products through TikTok mm -hmm. and finally deliver that social shopping experience that's been promised for years, right? Yeah, that's it. Well, I mean, it's uh, amazing the traction it's getting in Indonesia, um, mm -hmm. some of the Southeast Asian markets. It's really disrupting things. So I think that same disruption is going to happen here too. In terms of this UGC or disposable content, do you see any other platforms or channels really emerging that you think brands should stay on top of? Yeah. Um, I mean, the data on YouTube shorts is pretty unreal, mm -hmm. but we haven't really seen um, any of our clients really kind of go hard on it yet. Mm. But we're definitely seeing from, I guess we're hearing from particularly our clients who are more like growth hackers and people are really on the cutting edge. They're starting to experiment with that and, and seeing some really good, I guess, cost CPMs are quite low on there at the moment just because no one else is on there. Mm. So, yeah, that, that seems like a good opportunity. It also gives you the opportunity to do stuff that's a little bit different. So, like, the loopable videos seem to work really well on YouTube Shorts. That's a whole zone kind of briefing technique. There's also platforms like Pinterest that often people forget about, and I'm seeing some of our UGC ads popping up on there now but yeah it's a great platform people that use it use it religiously and there definitely seems to be a, like a lot less competition there so yeah great tip and um, probably the biggest one we think is slept on is actually linkedin ah. for b2b and obviously you have to be creative in the way that you brief it but b2b advertising is just so boring <laughs> <laughs> and has the biggest opportunity for disruption and for creativity i think and and really probably LinkedIn video is probably the, the next like frontier, I think. Heaven help us. <laughs> <laughs> 
you're at Digital Marketers Australia. What kind of feedback are you getting as you go and tell people about the product? Yeah, so we presented at that in front of 300, between 300 and 400 people. And after the session, we were just swarmed by digital marketers, both on agency side and brand side, just wanted to talk to us and, and figure out how we, that it could work for their brand and everything. So yeah, there's definitely um, so much buzz around UGC at the moment and fascination and how they can best implement it. So it was really great. It was fantastic. Awesome. It must feel good to be getting to the point where you can be out there talking about it and just trying to get that scale happening, right? I mean, you've got some beautiful case studies. You've got a great creator base now. Mm. Now it's ready to really go. You mentioned at the start there, Dave, around creator flow being backed by Better Labs. It Better Labs, they're a VC, are they? Yes, a venture fund. And yeah, startup studio as well. So yeah, we do kind of internal startups. And really the whole thing about Better Labs comes from our, I guess, our mothership, which is RACWA. And RAC is like a, the biggest insurer in Western Australia. It's kind of slogan is for the better. And so the whole point of Better Labs is to find problems worth solving just to make everyone's life better. <laughs> this is kind of, I guess, driving the, the mission behind Creative Flow as well. And that we just want to make it way better for brands and also for creators and clients just to work together and make it much easier to get the content they need to, to sell the products they need and for creators to have a, a full-time work schedule of being creative. Awesome. And George, did you ever imagine that your two years with Washblock would have led you to this venture? No, absolutely not. But yeah, wouldn't be here without Washblock and that experience. So yeah, I'm very grateful for that for sure. Awesome. So what's next on the cards, guys? 12 months. What are we doing over the next 12 months? Where are we focusing? Yeah, great question. I think kind of what you spoke on before, Nathan, just about hitting that scale. We feel like we've got the core of our product kind of working in terms of the ability to make it easy for brands and creators to, to connect and work together. But yeah, there's, there's huge opportunity for us to capitalize on by just getting out there and letting people know that there's a much easier way to do this. And so that's really going to be the focus is just kind of growing both our client side, but also the, the creator side and, and just improving out the tools and the features just to make everyone's kind of working relationships even better. What's high on the tools and features list for you? Oh, better we well, start there. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> start up like life, you know, it's like founder. it's um, always, I saw a, a T-shirt I probably need to have, which is like, it's on the roadmap, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Are you led by your clients in terms of what their requests are to build that roadmap out or do you kind of already have a vision of where it needs to go? A bit of both. I think the clients really, we allow them to really change the priorities for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just last week, I mean, you, you basically called up every single client. Yeah, we're, we're really, really big on getting the feedback from our customers and seeing what problems they're having and also on the creator side. And that's basically how we've built this product from the start, just listening and iterating and yeah, so we'll continue to do that. And I guess one other thing, Nathan, to answer your question is me personally and also Dave, we would love to go international at one point. So, yeah, that's big picture goals. Awesome. Why not? Why not? All right. So if we have either brands listening to this wanting to get started with or create more UGC content, potentially agencies coming on board to help up the game for their clients or content creators even who are going, well, I can actually do this. I can help out. What's the best way for them to get in touch and learn more? Yeah, just head to our website, creatorflow.com.au. As a creator, apply to join, show us your best videos. Uh, if you're an agency, uh, we'd love to chat about, yeah, partnering with you to just to help improve outcomes for all of your clients. And then, yeah, if you're a brand, we'd also love to chat. Like, I think that's a huge part of particularly our story is just understanding the challenges that brands face so yeah we really want to yeah partner with great great brands all around australia and the world jump on our website book a call up to chat or just go in and make an order <laughs> preferably the last one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dave george thanks for joining us on add to cart thanks for having us nice thanks man. great I really love the idea of having a third party create content, those who are really experienced and natural at creating content, but aren't necessarily influencers. So we're buying the skills, but not necessarily the audience. All right, here are the three things that I got out of that episode. Number one, if you are an aspiring ad creator, 
get the basics right. You might have amazing things to say and do, but the technical details, especially for video creation, are really important. We're talking things like clear audio, thoughtful framing, good lighting, get the basics right, and you'll look a million dollars. And number two, and this one is for the brands. Video is a tool, not a strategy. If you're a brand who wants to engage creators to make UGC, plan the strategy behind it first. What kind of customer are you trying to reach? What messages are we getting across? What's the tone of voice that we're going to use? This is all really helpful stuff so that when you get content back, you you don't just have to kind of hide it away in some folders that no one will ever find. You can actually go out and use it. So that brief and that strategy is so important. And lastly, something that the guys said that I really picked up on is the B2B video content opportunity. If our version of B2B marketing is pamphlets or LinkedIn posts or all of the usual, then I think there's a really great opportunity to disrupt with some video that captures our attention. After all, B2B buyers are still people and people want to buy from other people. Make sure you make it personable and video is a great way, which is often overlooked, to make connections in B2B. All right, if you want to try Creator Flow, sign up with the code add to cart, all one word, and you'll get 100 credits courtesy of Dave and George. There'll be a link in the show notes. Thanks for joining us today on Add to Cart. To listen to all our e-commerce conversations, now in the hundreds, you can head on over to addtocart.com.au. There, you can also join up to our free private Slack community to share e-commerce ideas, tips, and questions with other listeners. You can also subscribe to the Add to Cart weekly newsletter and browse some of the video highlights from our chats. There is a lot there. That's addtocart.com.au. And if I can ask you one thing before you go, if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you share it with a friend or a colleague who could benefit or leave us a review. It really makes a difference. Thanks again for listening. And until next time, keep those